Hey everybody, welcome back. So we're on part two of our caterpillar painting project. So if you don't have a painting that looks like this, or maybe a picture that has these line patterns drawn on it, then you need to go back to part number one and catch up with us and we will get everything ready to go. So first thing we're gonna do before we start doing the watercolor or the marker is we're going to take our black crayon and we're going to trace around the outside of these okay so something that i didn't mention in the first video and i probably should have is that you want to have regular crayons and not the ultra washable ones because the ultra washable ones since they're ultra washable, are not ultra good at resisting the watercolor paint or the markers. So I'll show you what those look like. Okay, so if your crayon says ultra clean washable, then it's not gonna be as good for this resist part as the other ones are going to be, just a regular Crayola crayon. So keep that in mind if you try this and it doesn't seem to be working as well, that might be the problem with your crayons. So we're going to make sure we trace all around those. And then what we're going to do is we're going to grab our markers and we're going to color these in using the idea of complementary colors. Okay. So looking back at our color wheel, we've got these colors that are opposite each other. Okay. Yellow and purple. Those are called complementary colors. Okay. Green and red are complements, okay? And orange and blue are complementary colors, okay? Knowing that helps you mixing colors a little bit, but it's also something just to know for color schemes and color design. But we're gonna use these opposite colors as we color things in. So we can take a yellow because it's opposite of purple and we can color over our purple, okay? And it's probably no surprise that the light yellow, okay, doesn't really cover up the dark purple, okay? What might be more surprising is that the dark purple, okay, doesn't really cover up the light yellow, okay? Ooh, sometimes this happens where your markers are dead and you need to find another marker that's not so dried out, okay? That happens to Mr. Moose just like it probably happens to you, okay? So, keep that marker from being dried out, but notice, even though it's a dark color, the yellow resists the water, and we can still see the light color showing through, okay? If you store your markers upside down, then all the ink is gonna run to the tip. So this marker has been upside down for a while. It's probably ready to go and get, be gotten rid of and thrown in the trash. So let's try this with the green, okay? Green's a pretty dark color, okay? So it would normally cover up a color like red, but this resist painting lets the red still show through a little bit. Not as much as the contrast on the yellow and the purple, but it still works. And then red and green. Our complementary colors. So we're gonna use that idea. and then orange and blue. And probably no surprise that the orange, which is the lighter color, doesn't really cover up the blue. But what's more of a surprise for most people is that that dark blue, while it covers the orange, it's still clearly visible underneath, okay? That's because crayons are made with wax, and wax resists water, 
okay, it pushes the water away, okay, and since the water is carrying the pigment in your marker, the pigment can't stick to the wax of the crayon. So that's the way it works there with watercolor and, or with markers and crayon. So let's try the watercolor paint and see how that works. All right, so let's try this out. So I've got some watercolors in actual tubes that you can squeeze out a little bit of paint into your palette. And if you have that kind of watercolors, then you could actually do the mixing of the colors like we did in part one with the tempera if you wanted to, or you could just use the colors as they are. A lot of people don't have tube watercolors, but they're gonna have some kind of watercolors in pans, okay, like this. And you just get the colors wet and you go from there. If you have colors like this with the pans, it's a little harder to mix, so I wouldn't try to do that. Just stick with finding the colors. Normally, you'll have these six colors, the three primaries and the three secondary colors. So in order to get some water in there, you can use a spray bottle. If you have a spray bottle to spray the water into your pan and get the watercolors um, wet, you need to make sure you have plenty of water when you're doing this resist, okay? If you have a medicine dropper or something, you can squeeze in some water into there. Another cool trick is have a cup of water and put a straw in there, put your finger on top of the straw, and then just take the water and drop some water into each well, okay? So put the straw in, put your finger on there to seal it up, and then you can drop a little bit of water in to each one, okay? If you've got a little kids at home and you have sippy cups, you can just dribble the water out of the sippy cup a little bit and you can go from here. But this is kind of a cool trick too, okay? To take a little bit of water, make sure you have your finger sealed all the way over the edge of it and then get a little bit of water in there. So once we have that, we're gonna stir up these colors and mix them up and try painting over our picture. Okay, so make sure you've stirred it up and you've got plenty of water in there. With these two watercolors, they actually usually have a lot more intense color than the pan watercolors. So let's see what happens, okay? So we can paint this yellow over the top of our purple and no surprise there, we can still see the purple pretty well. Okay, let's try the next color in our range. So we'll mix in a little bit of orange here and we'll try the orange over our blue. Okay. And the crown's gonna push away the orange color there. Again, not too much of a surprise. We can see through that orange, okay? Let's try the red. We'll get a little bit of that. Make sure we have enough water going on. See how the red covers. Ooh, the red likes to cover that green pretty well. Okay, so these are nice watercolors, okay? and they cover pretty well. Let's try a little bit of green. See what happens. Not too bad. Sometimes if you have to wait a little while for the wax to do its job and push the colors away to see through, okay? What else do we need? A little bit of blue. Over our orange. Almost put it on the yellow. You can kind of see the orange pushing away the blue. Make it a little darker. 
you can always go back and add some layers of color to make the color a little bit more intense and see if that continues to work. And then we'll try what should be our darkest color, which is the purple on top of the yellow. We'll see if this works. Yep, it covers pretty well, but we're still able to see that color showing through. So that's the idea of a crayon resist or a wax resist, okay? All right, one more thing I wanna show you is what we're gonna do with our acrylic and temper one, okay? Which is just using the crayons on top of that. It's a little simpler. All right, so one more thing before we go to that. Um, we might as well paint this brown on like we did the other one. So let's try mixing like three colors together and see what happens. See if we can get ourselves a nice brown color. There's a little green in there. There's a little blue. So we mixed all those colors. This is everybody's favorite part anyway. Okay, is stirring all the colors together. So if we stir all those colors together, we can get ourselves a little bit of brown to paint in our ground. Okay. Now, of course, you could just get your brown watercolor paint if you wanted to, but where's the fun in that? At least here, we get to mix those colors up a little bit, okay? There we go. Cool. So we got our brown onto there. And then you might even want to grab your brown marker and do the same thing on the bottom of the marker paper. So, but let's get our crayons and finish up the acrylic one. All right, so we're back here with the idea of our color wheel again. We've got our red, blue, yellow, orange, green, and purple crayons ready to go. So we wanna do our opposite colors. Remember, complementary colors. So we're going to, let's just start with blue. So the opposite of blue is orange. So here we can add our blue on top of our orange, okay? And no surprises here, we're just drawing on top of the paint, but it adds a little bit of detail and texture to it. So the red goes on top of the green. So we'll try a squiggly line going on to there. The yellow goes with the purple. Okay. And yellow has a hard time showing up on the purple, okay? Sometimes people use what's called a construction paper crown, but most people don't have those at home, so I wasn't gonna use those today. At school, I usually use those, and those will show up a lot brighter on top of these colors, but this is one way to do it this way, okay? So we'll try the purple on top of the yellow, okay? Construction paper crowns are pretty cool. They're just made to show up on dark paper or on top of paint. And then we'll try the orange on top of the blue. We can see it okay. Not perfect, but not too bad. And then the green on top of the red. Okay, so now we have our patterns on there for all of ours. Acrylic and tempera with crayon on top. crayon and marker, which probably looks the coolest for what we're doing, okay? Don't forget to grab a little brown, okay? And put a little dirt down here, or if you wanna think about it, like a tree branch that the caterpillar is crawling on, we could do that too, so we'll talk about that next time, okay? And then 
the last one is crayon and watercolor. So that finishes up part two. We're going to add a few details to finish these up and make them look like caterpillars instead of just a bunch of floating circles with a bunch of patterns on them. So check back next time for part three. Bye-bye.